God bless you, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to the Professional Truckers Association Church. Bow your heads with me as we ask God into our service today. Father God, I want to thank you because you are so good to us. Thank you because you spared us another week. You give us another chance to meet together and say a word from you. We ask now that you anoint us for your service. Give us the words to say. Anoint your people and, and give uh, encourage your people. Give them strength, Lord, to make their daily journeys. Help us on this journey and supply all of our needs. Bless the Professional Truckers Associ Association Church. Grant us the needs that we, that we have to make it to the next level. We know that you're with us and we put all things into your hands. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, my brothers and sisters, I do appreciate you for being here today. Uh, this is another Sunday morning where we're worshiping God together. I want to know from you, this is your church. It's not just my church, it's our church. And I want you to know what you would like to have incorporated into this service. Yes, I can sing and I can bring other singers in. I can do many things, but uh, we uh, try to keep it into a time frame because we do broadcast on the internet. Uh, to where it is not too lengthy of a service because many of you are working, you have to drive, you have to go different places, but I want you to know that I am here for you. We've also added a donation button. If you would like to donate or tie to the Professional Truckers Association, all you have to do is press the link. Uh, uh, it will be wherever you see this particular service. If you're not following us on the internet, please follow us at Facebook or Twitter or, or uh, LinkedIn, uh, Google, uh, 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 just on our YouTube channel, please follow us and be with us. We want you to know that we love you and this service is for you. Well, we started a series and we talked about it in our last lesson. And those of you that would like to, you can go to our archive lessons. I know that they're all mixed in together. The Professional Truckers Association Church and my Through the Bible teaching. Uh, but our services are archived. You can go back to our last lesson and listen to our service. Uh, and in this particular series, it would be good for you to do so. In our last lesson, we talked from the 12th chapter of the book of Daniel and and today we're going to be talking to you from the 24th chapter of the book of St. Matthew. Uh, they all tie in together these particular passages of scripture. Uh, we'll begin our reading uh, uh, when we go to St. Matthew in uh, chapter 24 at verse 15. But let's just give a, a brief recap, uh, just reading verse 11 and verse 12 in chapter uh, 12 of the book of Daniel. Uh, 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 so important because Jesus is actually in the 24th chapter uh, of the book of St. Matthew referring to this particular passage of scripture that we are reading now. Now, verse 11 reads in chapter 12 of the book of Daniel, uh, it reads from, from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away uh, and the abomination that maketh desolate set up. The abomination that maketh desolate. Uh, keep those words in your mind. The abomination, uh, something that is a stench in God's nostrils, something that God detests. Uh, when the abomination of des uh, uh, that maketh desolate uh, is set up. Now, now, what are you talking about? Uh, abomination that's so bad it makes desolate. Uh, well, what would make desolate is when the power and the and the spirit of God or God Himself would would with would withdraw himself uh, uh, from your blessings or from the blessings of a nation, a country, a world, whatever the case may be, uh, an abomination that maketh desolate uh, set up. Now, uh, I'm not going into a lot of drawn out things that what it could be, but we, have, we do know that God uh, detests some things, and I'll be honest, he detests some things that we do today, uh, and it's more than one thing that he detests in the day that we live. Uh, he detests us shedding blood. Do you know that? He detests us killing people needlessly, uh, whether that be uh, 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 on the streets, uh, uh, going, uh, uh, driving by and shooting and killing people, uh, whether that be uh, 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 you robbing stores and killing people, or whether that be uh, uh, what, uh, you are uh, 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 are in a official capacity.
rapacity and killing innocent people, whatever the case may be, God detests all of the killing that is going on in this world. Uh, other things that are going on in, uh, on in this world that we're making legal, God detests. And, and uh, all he has to do is just with, withdraw his hand uh, and we would be in trouble. So this is what the writer is saying from the time that the daily sacrifices shall be taken away uh, and the abomination that make it desolate set up, uh, there shall be a thousand two uh, 290 days or 1290 days if you want to do the math we talked about it uh, in our last lesson but a thousand a thousand two hundred and ninety days or twelve hundred and ninety days uh, we're talking days let's let's make that into years uh, uh, if you divide it by 365 days because it's 365 days in a year by that number 1290 you'll come up with three and a half years uh, and uh, then he goes on we go on to read in in uh, uh, verse 12 of uh, Daniel chapter 12 blessed is he that waited and cometh to the thousand of Three hundred and five and thirty. Well, we're talking here thirteen hundred thirty-five days. Now, uh, uh, we, if you divide that, you come up with just a little more than three and a half years. So, the the full essence of what he's trying to portray to us: uh, uh, this period period of seven years, seven years, or just above seven years uh, that is coming upon this earth. Uh, the um, the abomination that makes desolate. Uh, now let's move over to our next scripture, uh, chapter 24 of the book of St. Matthew. These are the words of Jesus. We'll begin our reading here at verse, uh, verse 15. The Bible reads, when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation. So Jesus is now referring to uh, uh, what Daniel had wrote uh, uh, in, uh, uh, in the 12th chapter of the book of Daniel, uh, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, uh, stand in the holy place, uh, whosoever readeth, let him understand. Uh, so what is Jesus saying to us? Uh, when you hear about the abomination of desolation, uh, when you can see things unfold in that way. Uh, he's saying, telling you and me uh, uh, to stand in a holy place. Uh, what are you talking about? Do we have to go and stand in the church house or, or stand in where we would believe would be holy grounds? Uh, well, I'm saying you need to stand in a, in a holy place uh, or let wherever you are be holy. Uh, in other words, let your life come on up to the mark. Uh, let your life come up to where Jesus would have you live. Uh, stand in a holy place and walk there for uh, you got to understand uh, when these things unfold, it's going to be important, uh, uh, very important uh, to live a life that pleases Jesus. Uh, at that time, you will want Jesus to be on your side. Uh, you would want the spirit of the Lord uh, to be on your side. Let me read verse 15 again and we will continue. <clears throat> Please pray with me. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by the prophet, by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whosoever readeth, uh, let him understand. Uh, now, uh, everybody's not going to understand when these things unfold. But let me let you know the believers should understand, um, especially when all of these things that are happening. Uh, well, I want you to know God is just about fed up with us now, and all the evil that's going on in our world, uh, innocent people being killed and and, and uh, 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 lots of things happening and I'm not bashing any group of people but there's a lot of things going on that, that God detests that he detests that he detests it's an abomination to him uh, so when he's when these things uh, go on don't you know that causes desolation uh, it causes God to withdraw his hand uh, well uh, verse 16 reads, uh, then let them who are in the in Judea flee into the mountains. Uh, well, uh, uh, I'll read another verse. Verse 17, let him who is on the housetop not come down uh, to take a, take things out of his house. Uh, what is he saying? When these things unfold, uh, there's not going to be a, there's not going to be any time for you to prepare for it. Uh, there's not going to be any time. If you're on the housetop, uh, you know, you're not going to have time to come down and go in your house and, and gather uh, uh, supplies or gather food to go on a journey uh, or to go through what's going to happen. Uh, I'll read it again. Let him who uh, let him who is on the housetop not come down to take any 
anything out of his house. Verse 18, neither let him who is in the field return back to take clothes. You don't have no time to go and pack up some clothes or pack up anything because things are going to happen so quickly that you're not going to have time to get anything together. You're going to be in a circumstance or in a situation that you won't have no control over, that you, you will just have to go from there and live from day to day or live without any type of prepared things for you. I'll read it again, verse 18. Neither let him who is in the field return back to take his clothes. <clears throat> Let's read verse 19. And war unto those who are with child in those days, uh, 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 who nurse children in those days. I'll read 19 again. War unto those who are with child uh, and to those who nurse children in those days. What are you talking about? Uh, well, uh, when these things happen so rapidly, uh, if you are pregnant or with child uh, and have to, have to flee from your home or go into a hiding place, uh, here you are uh, with child or with small children, giving nurse at this time, you're not only going to have to care for yourself, but you're going to have to care for that child. This is what Jesus is saying. When these things transpire, it's going to be hard enough for you to take care of your own self, let alone having to take care of yourself in a pregnant mode because you can't move as fast and can't do as much or, or, or having small children, you got to care for yourself and, and care for them. Make sure they get food and substance to make it uh, you got to understand how hard that would be. This is what our Lord is saying to us. In verse 20 it reads, But pray that your flight be not in the winter, uh, neither on the Sabbath day. Uh, what are you talking about when these things happen? Uh, take your flight or when you have to leave suddenly, uh, when you have to, have to leave your home suddenly and don't have time to go get supplies uh, to live day to day or go get you a change of clothes or whatever the case may be. Pray that they be not in the winter time. Why? In the winter time it's cold outside. Uh, you didn't have time to go home and get your coat. Uh, you didn't have time to go home, home and uh, get any canned goods or anything of that nature. Pray that your flight be not in the winter, uh, neither on the Sabbath day. Uh, when you know uh, the Sabbath day you're not supposed to do any work, uh, you not supposed to do any type of manual labor. Well, if you have to, if you're caught on the Sabbath day, you know what you're supposed to do and what you're not supposed to do. But yet, things will happen to the to the in the place. Things will happen so catastrophically. This world will be catapulted in such chaos that you won't have time to even think about Sabbath day, or or I won't have time to think about preparing or getting clothes, or even supplying uh, what you're going to eat for the next day. This is how important it is. Now let's read in verse 21. Uh, for then shall be great tribulation, uh, great trouble. Uh, now this is all linked in with the, uh, uh, with the book of Daniel. Uh, uh, this abomination that stinks in God's nostril uh, when he withdraws his hand from blessing us. Uh, don't you know the world will be catapulted into a tribulation period? Uh, and this is what Jesus is telling us right now. For then shall be great tribulation, uh, tribulation uh, such as was was uh, uh, such as was not since the beginning of the world uh, at, uh, to this time, um, nor shall ever be. Uh, this time of trouble is going to be the worst trouble that's ever happened in our world. We have had famines uh, in this world. We've had. Uh, <clears throat> We've had times of trouble uh, uh, in this world where where uh, people uh, couldn't get enough to eat or, or, or things happened, a great depression would happen uh, or a deep recession would happen that, that, that make things uncomfortable for us. Uh, but this time of tribulation, what this writer and what Jesus is saying here now is going to be such as never have happened before. Uh, it's going to be so bad uh, you cannot liken it under one famine that's been in this land. You cannot liken it uh, under one trouble that's already happened under now. Uh, and not only that's already happened in our past, uh, there's not even going to be anything like it in the future. That's what Jesus is saying to us uh, in, uh, uh, in uh, verse 21. <clears throat> 
I'll read it again for you. For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor shall ever be. Now verse 22 reads, and except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But the but for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. We're talking about this seven years of tribulation, this, this, this time of trouble where the trouble is so catastrophic. Uh, that uh, that uh, it will be hard for any anyone to survive. Uh, Jesus saying, except these days be shortened, no flesh would be saved. Uh, but because of the elect, for the elect's sake, uh, those of you that will stand firm on your commitment uh, and just know that Jesus is your Lord, uh, stand firm in your commitment to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Uh, he will shorten these days. Uh, he will shorten the days so some flesh will be saved. Uh, he'll shorten the days so that everybody will not be uh, severely uh, taken off or wiped off the earth. Uh, Jesus will, sh will shorten these days. <coughs> I hope you're hearing me today. How severe this, is, this will be. Uh, let's read one more verse, verse 23. Uh, then if any man shall say unto you, lo, here is Christ, uh, or there, believe it not. Uh, in these days, when these things happen, and, and this stuff is happening in the day that we live, uh, people are now saying that they are the Christ, uh, or that they are Jesus. You better watch all this nonsense that's happening nowadays. Uh, well, when Jesus comes, you don't have to worry about going to him. Uh, he's going to come to you. Uh, you won't have to worry about running to where or finding where he is. Uh, he will receive you. Uh, and we'll talk about that in a later in another service uh, in this series. Uh, well, you got to understand these things are happening now. People saying that they are Christ. Uh, well, false Christ here and false Christ there. You have to understand the devil is real and he's very cunning. Uh, so we have to be very careful not to listen to all these things. Uh, if someone says they are Christ, uh, well, search their life. Uh, well, Christ had to be born of a virgin uh, like our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. If you can go back and you can find that he was born of a woman, that's not the Christ. If he was not born of a virgin, you will know that's not the Christ. Well, you got to understand even even God, when people are used of God or they're used by some type of uh, extraordinary means, that does not make them the Christ. You have to understand in order to be the Christ, all things had to be lined up, including uh, being born of a virgin, uh, including dying uh, and being resurrected resurrected from the dead. Uh, all of these things together will let us know who Christ is. Uh, but one little area of it, well, because he works miracles or whatever, that does not make him the Christ. Uh, you have to look at the whole picture. <clears throat> Was, a, was he born of a virgin? Uh, did Was God's spirit on him? Or uh, was God, uh, uh, was he uh, as God made flesh? Uh, you got to look at all these things. Uh, did he die uh, and shed his blood? Uh, was he resurrected? Uh, you got to understand all of these things come into play uh, when you're talking about the Christ. Uh, just because someone works a miracle, and let's read about it. If, we, if you want to read with me, let's read verse 24. For there shall be there shall arise false Christ and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible, they would deceive the very elect. And this is how cunning they will be. They will, they will deceive the very elect. Why? Because they will work miracles. Now, I'm a firm believer that God works miracles and he uses men to, uh, to uh, even work miracles through them. But you got to understand Stand, that's not uh, in itself or all by itself. Um, that's not what makes you the Christ. Uh, that means that, that, that God uses you and you ought to thank God for that. Uh, but that's not, that does not elevate you to be in the Christ. Uh, well, you know if you're born of a virgin, uh, you'll know uh, if you died and was resurrected, if you don't have those in your resume, you're not the Christ. Uh, let, me, let me just bring it to you and tell you like it is. 